There's no better time to talk about the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer than when you're at the ocean. Let's talk about this beast. It's just a gypsy in my soul. Hey guys, I'm John Rittar from WatchSpec.com. Today I'm coming to you from the Gulf Coast of Florida and I'm here on vacation with my family. Look at that beautiful ocean behind me. With that, you know, I'm inspired to talk about a dive watch and that dive watch we're going to talk about is the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. Now, this video is going to highlight just the key points of this watch and I do have a full detailed written review that you can find all the detail you need and a lot of detailed photos on this watch. You can find that at watchspec.com and I will leave a link to that in the notes below. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and sign up for notifications so you can catch all my videos when they release. Now with that, let's get started. Tag Heuer is a name that everyone knows and watches. They are a Swiss luxury brand with a ton of popularity. The Heuer name carries a lot of history with racing or yachting watches and they carry very popular lines like the Carrera or the Monaco and the Aqua Racer is another one of those popular lines. Here and there, down back again. The Tag Heuer Aqua Racer was first launched back in 2003 but it was actually inspired by the Heuer 2000 series which was first launched back in the early 1980s. So there is a history of dive watches in the Heuer name. Now, there have been several different designs of the Aqua Racer over time, but they've all stayed true to that, the theme of the Aqua Racer line, which is very bold styling, very strong water resistance, and that Swiss quality and accurate movement. So in terms of style, this thing is bold in every way. It's bold in its size and its weight, in all the angles and facets applied. It's just plain bold. Uh, the diameter of this case is 42 millimeters. The thickness is a chunky 15 millimeters. A lot of that's due to the chronograph movement inside, which we'll talk about later. This applies a solid stainless steel screw down case back, which displays that signature Aqua Racer, you know, old school scuba helmet, which I find to be really cool. The lug width on this is a 21 millimeter. That is a non-standard size, so if you're looking to replace your band, it will be a little bit more difficult to find a replacement. The dial on this has that very unique, horizontally striped, textured, black appearance, which I find to be extremely cool and very defining to the Aqua Racer line. And this is a chronograph, so this does have the chronograph subdials. I'll be the first to admit that I'm not the biggest fan of chronographs. That's just a personal preference as they can overcomplicate the visual of the dial and make it harder to read the time quickly when you glance down at it. However, Tag Heuer designed this watch in a way that you're not going to have an issue with that. By the silver rectangular hands with that white filling that matching the silver rectangular hour markers also with that white filling, it's easy to just quickly glance down and distinguish the hands and the markers in order to quickly tell that basic time. And I have to say this, this was really well done by TAG. The glass applied is a scratch resistant sapphire and they applied an anti-reflective coating to the bottom side of that so you're never going to have an issue with glare. The bezel is designed to look like, in my opinion, one of those submarine watertight hatches with all the angles and you know just the very solid robust appearance of that bezel it's to me the most defining style feature on this entire watch and I think it's really cool the band on this is an oyster inspired stainless steel three link I say oyster inspired because in the center links it does apply a little bit of a chamfer on the top and bottom corners to give a little bit of a unique look and I have to say, just the fine touches and accents applied to this watch are well thought out and well executed. You can actually see the Swiss quality and luxury in this watch. So Tag did a really nice job with the style of this watch. Okay, next is comfort. I just wanted to quickly mention that 
you know, this thing is a behemoth. The weight of this guy is 7.5 ounces or 212 grams. That's the equivalent of 37 US quarters if you wanted to collect those and check it out. Uh, I compare that to the weight of a Rolex Submariner, which in my opinion is the gold standard of a dive watch. That's coming in it coming in at only 4.6 ounces or 130 grams. So this is quite a bit heavier. So it can have a, a bit of an unbalanced feel on your wrist. A lot of that weight is all in the case and in that movement. So, you know, all the weight's not just on one side. But if you fit that bracelet appropriately to your wrist, you're gonna minimize that. And I'll be honest, I, I do not have an issue with the comfort of this watch. You know, it well wears very well. The bracelet also, I have to say they did a, a nice job with the design of the links where they round out the skin side of each link and apply a little bit of a, a chamfer or taper to the skin side. So it just fits really nicely around and it's not gonna pull at your hair or your skin. Okay, let's talk movement and accuracy. The movement in this Aqua Racer being the chronograph is the Tag Heuer Caliber 16. That's actually just a rebadge of an ETA 7750, which is a very solid uh, Swiss movement itself. And it's that movement's almost 45 years old. So it's got a legacy and it proves that it's a quality movement. I am a little disappointed that Tag doesn't focus more on their movements and you know develop those in-house. They do outsource it. That's a personal preference for me. Uh, even the holy trinity of watches, you know, they've outsourced movements in the past. Um, and even with this ETA 7750, it's applied in a lot of other Swiss luxury brands. So again, it's just a personal preference. Now this movement is a monodirectional winding. So you can feel a little bit of an unbalance in the, the charging of that uh, mainspring and that movement of that rotor. And you can hear it a little bit sometimes, but you know, that's something you get to get used to very quickly. Now there's a lot of good in this movement. So first is it's eight beats per second. So it's got a really nice smooth sweep of the second hand. However, this is a chronograph. The main seconds are captured in a subdial on a very small hand. So it's, it's difficult to see that improvement over a six beats per second, for example, but it's still uh, a nice quality um, sweep to it. It has a 42 hour power reserve. It's hackable. It's got hand winding. Regulation is possible on this watch, which is always a plus in my book. However, you're not going to need it. This is actually regulated at the factory in multiple positions. So out of the box, you're gonna get a very accurate movement. This one is running within one second per day. So that's honestly phenomenal. Um, and this is a 25 joule movement. Okay, for usability, I just wanted to touch on a couple key points. Uh, first is the water resistance, 300 meters. That is very impressive. Uh, that matches the Rolex Submariner, for example. They also have 500 meter uh, variations of the Aqua Racer. The bezel on this is a 120 click single direction uh, bezel. Every one of these clicks is so rock solid and it's, and you mean you could hear it Feels very solid, very quality, love that. Um, also, the Loom is the other point I wanted to touch on. This is the Tag Super Luminova. It lasts a long time. The style of where the Loom is applied in those hour and minute hands as well as the hour markers. And then it's got the white pip dot on the bezel. Uh, it's in the dark, very easy to read, number one and very elegant looking in my opinion. I really like it, very classy. Okay, let's talk value and verdict. The luxury dive watch market is quite extensive. There is no denying that. And in my opinion, as I've already mentioned, the gold standard, the best out there is the Rolex Submariner. Um, but let's consider the Rolex is starting $8,000. This Tag Heuer matches the water resistance of 300 meters uh, of that Rolex Submariner. It adds a chronograph functionality. It provides that very bold, unique styling, and it's coming in below $2,200. I mean, that's, a, that's incredibly less money, and what a great 
package that you get for the money from TAG. So that's very impressive. Now this watch does have a much stronger aggressive styling than that compared to the Rolex Mariner. So it's not going to be as versatile as that Rolex and satisfy that wide range, wider range of usage environments. And in terms of a dive watch, you can get a much less expensive dive watch that can satisfy all of your diving needs. But if you're looking for a Swiss luxury timepiece with a strong name and bold styling, then you really can't pass up the, the Aqua Racer. It's something that you have to at least consider. Now I know some of you are thinking that the Tag Heuer name gets a lot of flack out there and honestly there is some truth to that. You know, personally, sure, I wish Tag Heuer wasn't owned by Louis Vuitton. I wish they would not outsource their movements but, you know, focus on the quality of an in-house movement. But let's remember that the Tag name does carry a strong history to it and even the Aqua Racer line, inspired by the Heuer 2000 series, you know, has a history almost of 40 years, so that's that's really strong. And considering the accuracy you get from this, the the bold styling, the honestly the luxury quality and detail in this, as well as that price point, you know, it's it's hard not to consider the Tag Heuer, honestly. Now I should mention that there are newer versions of the Aqua Racer than what I'm wearing here, both a chronograph version and a non-chronograph version. A lot of the detail is basically the same as, as what I've explained here on this watch. Uh, the newer version, instead of a silver bezel, has a black ceramic bezel, for example. The um, non-chronograph version, instead of the caliber 16, is applying the very well-known caliber 5 movement. Uh, the second hand, for example, applies a, a loom pointer. Just small details like that but a lot of the content is basically the same. I will leave links to uh, those products as well in the link in the notes below. And also you can catch uh, the detail of those in my written review over at watchspec.com, which I recommend you take a look at for all the extra detail that's provided over there. If you want this watch for yourself, I will leave product links in the notes below, but I wanna know your thoughts. Do you own this watch or are you considering to buy this watch? You know, I want to know what you love, what, do you agree with the things I said in this, in this review? Let me know, let's start that conversation in the comments below. And guys, please give this video a like if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel and sign up for notifications. You don't want to miss my future videos. And with that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Just, just, gypsy, yeah, yeah.